WFM 91.7. Thank you so much for tuning in and of course joining us right here on Women Radio WFM 91.7. This is Nigeria's first radio station for women and their families. Well, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope today is looking good for you. I hope that this week would definitely, you know, be a part of the process to make your life better and to make you feel good. At least at the end of the day. All right. So yes, this is Women Radio. My name is Rose Yusuf Kaiser, and you're welcome to the program, The Big Question. The Big Question on Women Radio WFM 91.7 is a program where we discuss and uh, profess solutions to issues affecting us as a nation and as citizens. The Big Question comes to you Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 12:05 p.m. Now, to be a part of the big question, do what to call us upon 07000 917 Send a text or a WhatsApp message to 070 317 Or you can also send in your contributions to our social media platforms Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at WFM 917. Or log on to our website www.wfm917.com. All right, this is about eight minutes after 12 right here. Now, today on the big question, we'll be looking at a review of educational materials in our Nigerian and Nigerian curriculum. All right, why we need a review of educational materials in the Nigerian curriculum. Now, just before the end of last week, I think on Thursday, there about the news broke out that um, the House of Representatives asked the federal government and other subnational government to ban the use of a popular children textbook, Queen Premier in schools around the country for its inappropriate content especially for young children in schools now this brings now this is just one of the books that the lawmakers took note of now um, a lot of questions will come to mind how many of, how many of these kind of books do we have circulating in our schools how about books that actually go into our schools without any kind of monitoring you know and all of that now where does this leave our young minds our young ones in school where does this leave them because at the end of the day um, these books are actually um, what gets to shape their minds, their thought process, and how they are able to, you know, understand things and help them make decisions at the end of the day. It all starts from there. And if we're having this challenge now um, of this kind of textbook used in nursery schools, this actually, for me, I think it opens, you know, a doors of so many questions. What kind of books are, are we? are we actually giving our young ones in schools all right nursery school primary schools what are we exposing them to what kind of world are we exposing them to um where does the cultural tradition and all of that where does it come to play in all of this because yeah in the western world they might not see anything wrong in such having such a textbook in schools but bringing it down here you know so country our dear country that we want to uphold all its values we want to uphold all its you know the things that make nigeria nigeria we want to uphold it and keep passing this down to the next generation where does this take us to all right so today on the program we'll be looking at um you know why we need a review of educational materials in the nigerian curriculum and to do this with me today is the popular voice that you get to hear on women radio trust me i was also like ah are you serious when i heard that she was not just you know um a, a presenter here on women radio but she's actually an educationist and she's an educational consultant with 20 years of experience in her bag i was like oh yes okay this is what we're definitely written for so i'm talking about florence Oladotu amal thank you so much for joining me today on the big question Thank you, Rose. Good afternoon, WFM. Good afternoon, Nigeria. It's my pleasure to be here today. All right. So if you hear that voice, I'm sure you say, "Ah, oh, that's like Jovi." <laughs> yes, yes. She's the one. She's the one. So, um, with 20 years of experience, I'm super excited to talk to you on this uh, this afternoon. So, like I said, this is uh, 11 minutes after 12. So do well to call in the program 0700917917. Send a text or a WhatsApp message. To 07031756537. All right, now let's get on to it. Um, Florence, as an educationist of over 20 years and a consultant at that, what's your overview on our educational system and what's, you know, even looking at the curriculum in total? Hmm. That's a big question. 
Our educational system, as we speak, hmm. is in a poor state. And I'm very, very sad to hmm. have to express that, but that is the truth. And, you know, I just don't talk. I have my facts and figures. Yeah. Statistically, if you look at the educational ranking, in Africa, there are uh, 154 countries in Africa. Hmm. Nigeria ranks 12th. Hmm. Despite the fact that we are the largest, the biggest, you know, with all the resources, yeah. physical, economical, intellectual resources, we rank 12. Hmm. And I was interested, I was curious, who are the first 11 that beat us to it? Smaller countries, seemingly poorer countries, Namibia, Kenya, Tunisia, wow. Cape Verde, except for South Africa, that we can say, okay, mm. South Africa is also a big country. Smaller countries beat us to it. And now look at, look at it on a global scale. Out of 195 countries, we are 124th in education. So that is a horrific, abysmal statistic that should make anybody weep. And why is it so? A lot of factors. Number one, poor funding. The United Nations has a recommendation that every nation should devote a minimum of 26% of her budget to education. education. Nigeria has never met this has never met it. I, I stand to be corrected, either at the national level and at the state level. The best we have done, the best states, maybe 15%, maybe 13%, rose. Some states do 5%, 3%. Tell me what they want to do with such a poor funding. And of course, wherever you have fund, poor funding, yeah. you have poor infrastructure. Sure. Of course, education is expensive. Everybody knows, whether at the private level or at the public level. But then, if you say education is expensive, you go try ignorance, ignorance. and you'll see. So, poor funding, poor infrastructure, low quality teaching. Mm -hmm. Low quality teaching. You have square pegs in round holes. It is only in the education sector that you have unqualified people, uncertified people. In the medical profession, you cannot go to the theater and attempt to open up a patient mm -hmm. if you are not a certified doctor. Sure. If you are not a certified lawyer, you cannot put on wig and go to the doc and begin to say, you understand? Mm -hmm. But in the school system, you see engineering graduates becoming English teachers, I mean, math teachers. Mm -hmm. Math communication graduates becoming mm -hmm. English, English teachers. teachers. Of course, I don't doubt their knowledge of the subject, but mm -hmm. where is the methodology? They have not been trained. For instance, I didn't start out as a teacher or as an educationist. My first degree was actually Greek economics, and I went on to have an MBA. Mm -hmm. But when I found myself in the education sector, I knew I had to equip myself. So I went back to school, and I did a postgraduate diploma in edu admin and planning. And that opened up my horizon. I said, wow, is this what it entails? And later, TRC and Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria mm -hmm. now brought up a policy. Every teacher should be certified and licensed. And what does it entail? You need to write an exam. I just wrote that exam. Hmm. They call it PQE. In that PQE, you are set in 23 subjects. History of education, sociology of education, methodology of education, classroom management, teacher education, adult wow. education, special education, all kinds, maths, library studies, and so on. Rose, how many people who teach have gone through that? I don't have the statistic, mm. but I doubt if you go to an average school, maybe you have 10 teachers, hardly will you have one or two who are certified by TRC. Yeah. So you find out that people teach without being certified. Mm. So what do you want them to do? They will do their best, but their best will never be good enough. So that also accounts for a problem. Of course, poor reading culture. Our children have replaced reading with other things. They would rather play games, computer games you know, computer games, do this and all that. Of course, when they don't read mm. and the exam is approaching, what do they resort to? Exam or practices. And of course, the mother of it all, corruption. Because corruption has pervaded the entire society, education sector, it has uh, cascaded into the education sector mm. because it's part of the society. So you see a whole range of factors culminating in the fact that our education state, I mean, uh, situation is in a very poor state. All right, thank you so much, Florence. Uh, because mentioning all of these factors, one would you know want to sit back and really think about it, mm. especially when you have people like my father that will say it was far much better in my time. It was, I think, I was having a conversation with him. My kid brother is supposed to go back to school, ATB about you, mm. and one of the professors there was telling him that ah, it's not like our time, or then you just have like two or three people in a room, mm. but now that same room <laughs> it could take like six, seven people. 
if not up to nine. So how are they supposed to balance that up? And a lot of things have actually gone wrong. All right, so thank you very much for your thoughts on that. Um, let's look at um, books that we use currently in our schools, nursery, primary, and even secondary schools. Um, this is 2023 yeah. right now and a lot of times you'll hear people will say that oh we do a lot of theory in schools we don't do practical things in school you know and all of that so with the times that we are in now are these books still a reflection of what we are supposed to be using now because if I'm not mistaken the same textbook I use in 2007 no 2006 2005 in secondary school no, I was like, what am I even saying? Yeah, I think so. It's the same textbook that, you know, some of my junior ones are using right now in secondary school. So, are we not supposed to be a, see a shift? You know, are we not supposed to see a shift? Because at the end of the day, 1997, 1996, mm. primary school, and some of these textbooks are still being used now. This is 2023. Mm. So, how far with that? Are we not supposed to see maybe a review of all of that? You know, are things actually changing? Hmm. There has been some sort of review, hmm. but we haven't had enough of reviews. And review is supposed to be a regular thing. Yeah. I would recommend three, four years review mm -hmm. because I mean, if a book is adopted, a lot goes into the adoption of any book. Let me see, let me start by saying that. So you don't want to adopt a book, and one year you have taken it off shelf. Hmm. But at least three, four, five years after you have assessed the the the, the, the results or the productivity of that book. But having said that, a lot of Effort has gone into review. Let me say this. The agency that is in charge of book review, curriculum development, and so on is the NERDC, Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council. Mm. But it's not a solo effort. They don't do it alone. They get inputs, or they are supposed to get inputs and feedbacks from various stakeholders, from school teachers, because school teachers are the closest to the children, yeah. from school heads, from community heads, from religious bodies, from legislatures, like you had with this uh, Queen Primer last week, you know. So people send in their inputs, and those inputs inform the reviews. Again, how do we come about the books we use, the subjects we teach? We determine the books we need. And since we are having a comparative study, let me just say this. In the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, for instance, I was in the primary school in the 70s. It, what we did then was arithmetic. It wasn't maths. It wasn't called maths. I'm sure people of my age will identify with that. And we had only one textbook, Lacombe. Hmm. I'm sure if you ask your father, most likely he will tell you Lacombe. But over the years, they broke it down to maths textbook and quantitative aptitude. Hmm. That's when this QA thing came in. Hmm. English also was broken down to core English and verbal aptitude. In our days, there was nothing like computer. I never saw computer until I got to the university. As a matter of fact, I didn't touch it. I only saw it. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. But today, because of the global, you know, uh, the, the world has become a global village, online education, computer has become infused into our educational system. And today you see a primary school child manipulating devices. Mm -hmm. So ICT was introduced, information and communication technology, data processing was introduced, and so books that would teach so, those subjects were so right. introduced. In our days, we did civics and, and uh, what's it called? Current affairs. Mm. At some point, it was abolished. Mm. But was it later brought back to the senior secondary school as citizenship in education? So you see, some reviews have been done here and there. Mm. But then we haven't been very consistent. But there is one profound um, innovation that I need to talk about. Um, in our days, we didn't do much on entrepreneurship. Then, people who graduated, I graduated, I had my first, I finished my first degree in 1989. People who graduated in the 70s and the 80s would tell us stories of the moment you graduate, you are given a car, you are given a house, you are given a job. Have you heard that story before? Mm -hmm. But when reality hit us, mm -hmm. and that was no longer happening, people who studied, I mean, I don't want to demean any subject, mm -hmm. just for purpose of illustration. Somebody studied archaeology or anthropology or mm -hmm. sociology and no job for you. What can you do with that that you have studied? Hmm. So that made the government look into the area of entrepreneurship. And so into the senior secondary curriculum, they introduced entrepreneurship subjects like data processing, photography, um, textile, food hmm. and nutrition, automobile. So that if you finish school start and you can't go further and you can't get a job, you can lay your hands on what you have learned. 
that's a good innovation. Yes. So times have actually propelled us to make such reviews. Mm. But by and large, we need to do that more often and we need to be more realistic. We need to be more truthful. Mm. Let's look at our prevailing situation and let's do what works for us. We do not have to do follow follow all the time because the Western world is doing this, we follow. Mm -hmm. Many times their initiatives are good, but then we have to bring it down to our own level, yeah. look at the suitability, make adjustments here and there, and do what works for our people. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. This is Women Radio WFM 91.7, Nigeria's first radio station for women and their families. And this is about 22 minutes after 12. We are on the program The Big Question this afternoon and we are looking at why we need a review of educational materials in Nigerian curriculum. All right, my name is Rosie Sukaiser and I have with me an educational consultant, Florence Oladotun Amao, and she's here talking to us, you know, with her vast experience in education so far. She's talking to us, uh, you know, on this, this afternoon. So do want to be a part of the program by dialing 07000 917 Send us a text or a WhatsApp message to 070-317-565-37. All right, let's uh, look at... Um, the kind of materials that get into our schools to be used. Mm -hmm. Now, um, just last week, like I was saying in the introduction, that our lawmakers took note of that. It had to take one person to bring that up before, you know, a lot of people's attention went there. Now, that was just one out of many. Now, um, do you think that um, the government actually takes time, you know, to, to actually go through some of these materials like you said there's a body in charge of you know uh vetting and monitoring some of the things that get into schools now do we do, does the government actually take time to, to to actually go through these materials that get into schools because if it was taken this premier issue would have been spotted spotted you know long time ago because I was just asking my colleague here, when you use Premier, did you take note of this? <laughs> no, no, I will not blame her because we we're all into it. Because I use this Premier too. I use the Queen Premier. So, I mean, why is it just coming up now? And how many of these kind of books do we have out there that our kids get to read, even in schools, without being spotted? Let me start with the Queen Premier issue. Oh. It, was, it was news to me too when I got it, when I got the news last week. Because I've also used Queen Primer for my own son. Hmm is an adult now, and for students that have passed through me. Queen Primer was such a wonderful book that taught reading, mm -hmm. spelling, writing. You know, two letter words, three letter three words, letter four letter words. 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 And the moment a child can put letters together to form words, can put two, three words together, mm -hmm. he's forming sentences and is reading. But I never spotted this, this. In fact, I was trying to look for a copy, if I could still get a copy of yeah. this book. But I know that book reviewers, they have what we call revised edition. Mm -hmm. You can find one book being revised several times. True. So I'm suspecting that this book was just revised mm -hmm. to reflect whatever is now reflecting, mm -hmm. which, is, which is alien to our own culture. Mm -hmm. I saw that it has some offensive words that you know, connote some sexual perversion mm -hmm. thing, LGBTQT stuff and the rest of them. And I commend that uh, lawmaker who spotted it and his courage to bring it to the floor. Because in Nigeria, uh, I think in 2014, President Jonathan passed the anti-gay law. And the, if, you're, if you're guilty, you go to jail for 14 years. So we cannot have that law and not have a book that will promote such a thing. Mm. Because when a child spots a word in Queen Primer for, or any book, a curious child will say, mommy or teacher, what does this word mean? True. By the time you want to explain that word, you are going deeper and deeper into certain things you don't want to expose the child to. Mm. So some people slept on duty. Let me just put it that way. Because when we say government, who is exactly government? When we say government body, government agency, who is government agency? Are they not people that have been employed to work? Mm -hmm. You know, people go to work, when they leave home in the morning, they, they tell their spouses or whoever, I'm going to work. But sadly, they get to the work, the place of work, and they don't do, they don't do the work. And I've heard that people do not do what you expect. They do what you inspect. Mm. So where is the place of evaluation? Where is the place of appraisal? Who, what is the hierarchy, the rank and file of people who should have vetted those materials? I think some heads should roll in this situation to mm. serve as a deterrent. Sure. Because if that was not spotted, before you know it, the thing begins to affect us in our society. So poor attitude to work on the part of government officials mm. or people who have been saddled with such responsibility. Wrong mindsets. People will tell you, 
uh, I, I cannot go and kill myself. It's like war kills. Mm. You understand? So those attitudes have, have not allowed people to do what they should do. And having a policy and implementing it is way, way apart. Yeah. You may have a good policy if you have not implemented it. Mm -mm. For it to achieve the desired goal, you haven't done anything. So this issue of vetting is a whole lot of work. And that's why it, it cannot be done annually. You know I said that. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot will go into it. But then it should be done thoroughly and diligently such that things that shouldn't that children shouldn't be exposed to we protect them from getting exposed to them all right thank you very much for that now let's look at um, how sometimes these um books actually get to schools now um we will not sit here and assume that oh well sometimes it doesn't have to do with somebody from the inside because i could be an author and because i want children to buy my books mm. I could take it to a particular school and tell the person okay um, you help me sell these books now let it go or take it to the owner of the school say nah, help me now at least at the end of the day you you two you have your own commission or something something like that with the kind of number of schools we have yeah. right now and which is not all of them that are actually approved you know we have a lot of schools that are not government approved sure. but they their signboards are out there <laughs> and students still go there so when you find this kind of schools that are not approved and it's not like they, they come regularly to do checks on them, you know, from the government, you could have some of these things passing around, going around, some of these unauthorized books going around, mm -hmm. books that at the end of the day might not even add any value to the child. Well, because you know the person that knows the person that mm -hmm. is the author of the book, they are out there. So how do we break this chain? How do we come out of this? Because at the end of the day, we still want to sharpen the minds of our young ones. <laughs> this issue of one approved schools that you just talked about is a whole lot. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> but sadly, mm -hmm. they, are, they are diluting the system in a very horrible manner. Ideally, mm -hmm. under normal circumstances, a school should not adopt books. Mm -hmm. It's not their job. It should come from the government, from the Ministry of Education, or the zonal they call it, in Auguste, for instance, they call it zonal education boards. Mm. In Lagos, they call it educational districts. They are the ones that will sit down alongside NR, NERGC to look at the books. What are the things we want to achieve? What is in the mm. curriculum for this year? For instance, basic four mathematics. Mm. What is in the curriculum? They break that yearly curriculum into a timely or a weekly scheme of work. They now, the teacher now goes further to break it into a daily plan. So a child is supposed to know A, B, C, D, E in a year. Mm. You can't, from day one, you can't pump everything into his head. Mm -mm. There has to be a plan. So when they have broken down this, the curriculum into scheme, into lesson plan, that's the stage one. Then the teacher who is going to teach that subject yeah. should handle the book, look at the suitability of the book, does this book that is being recommended, does it satisfy this? Would it, be able, would it assist me to teach this subject hmm. or these topics? If they are deficient, you, do, you tell them, you tell whoever your boss is, I don't find this book suitable because these topics, these topics, these topics are not there. And you don't want to go start looking for supplementary books. That doesn't happen. Many times teachers don't have a say. Hmm. That's number one. Number two, apart from the content, the production quality. You see some books now. I'm a very critical person. I read and I write. And the moment I spot a grammatical error in a book, I'm, I'm put off, no matter what you have to offer. Hmm. So when, a, when an author has taken time to write a book on a particular content, the content may be rich, but you have spelling mistakes, you have grammar errors. Okay. What are you teaching? Hmm. Don't forget you are teaching children. You are just teaching them how to read and write. Hmm. You are just teaching them English language. You are just teaching them grammar. Now they have to contend with grammatical mistakes in a book they are using. You are compounding their problems. So, sometimes books are recommended or adopted mm. and it's so badly printed that... I had an experience when I was in charge of a school. We, we adopted a book, one of the books that was recommended from a publisher. And I never used to patronize pirates, you know, roadside bookshop and all that. I would go to the publishing house myself. I went to this publishing house, took this particular book. 
a week or second week into the term, mm -hmm. parents started complaining. Teachers brought it to my notice that the sheets were falling off. Mm -hmm. I was so, so angry because how do you explain to parents who have paid money paid. for books? You know what I did? I recalled all the books, took them back to the publisher and insisted I was going to see the MD. Mm -hmm. You know, I was ready to make a scene because people had paid money. The MD now said, hey, madam, please, hey, you know all this. I said, oh, God, don't tell me about pirates. So what I need is quality book for my children. And he said he was going to fix them. And he asked me to come back for a reprint, which, which, was, which happened. So you see, all kinds of things have crept into the system that have really messed up our system. Hmm. But by and large, it's good to encourage new authors. It's good to encourage people who have ideas. Yeah. But we should have standards below which we will not go. Mm -hmm. No matter who the person is. Even if it's your husband who just wrote a book. Mm. Don't adopt that book because it's your husband. Because the, 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 the bigger picture is, are the children who will use that book. So at the end of the day, what have you contributed to the society? Have you adopted a book or recommended a book that will do a disservice to the children? Posterity will judge. So standards should be set. Standards should not be compromised. I don't, I mean, and of course, some authors, they want to make money from books. Authors who want to make money from books, for goodness sake, invest in good proofreaders. Invest in good editors. Let them help you come up with a, 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 a solid material that people will not fault. If you put in so much and you err in those little, little things, they appear little, but they are very important. Of then course. what are we saying? What are we saying? So we need to we need to wake up. We need to right. wake up. Thank you so much, Florence. Now, um, let's have your last words. Where do we go to from here? Because this is a program where, you know, we get to prefer solutions to issues affecting us. Because this is definitely affecting us. It's affecting our young ones. Mm. So it's something that will definitely get to affect us. So where do we go to from here? What solutions do you see um, happening? And um, you know, what's your What's your hope or what's your dream as an educationist for our education system in Nigeria? Let's just wrap it up with that. Thank you, Rose. I will, I will round off the way I started. I highlighted the problems. Hmm. So my hope and my dream for the education system in Nigeria is, first of all, let government fund education. And I'm appealing, I, I don't want to use the word challenge, I'm appealing to this present government from the president, President Inubu, to the Minister of Education, to the state governors and the state commissioners of education. Let us fund education. This idea of earmarking 10%, 11%, out of 26% that United Nations recommended will not help us. Hmm. That's the first thing. If we do that, then infrastructure will improve. Then I also want to challenge the TRC and the Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria. They are doing so much, but much more still needs to be done. Let us ensure that everyone that goes by the name teacher is certified and licensed. Hmm. Whatever it will take us. It is when we have square pegs in square holes that we can have results. Of course, this um, nobody should, I mean, pardon me, out of school children. Hmm. Uh, in 2020, we, we got a statistic that over 20 million children were out of school. You don't even need to go far. Don't even go to United Nations to get, go to the bus stop, you will see them. Go under Maburo Bridge, you will see them. Each time I see such children, my heart bleeds. Because I know these children are, they are, they are, they are like, uh, what, how do they call it now? Uh, something waiting to explode. You know? Over time, God forbid, they become criminals. Because there's no vacuum. The time they're supposed to spend in school, they are not productively engaged. They engage in other things. And so crime rate will increase, ultimately. So when you don't fix all these problems, you can't, you can't have, it's not, it's not magic. It is not magic, mm -hmm. but it is doable. Hmm. It is doable. So I want to task this government. Have smart goals. Tell yourselves in the first year, the first tenor, your four-year tenor, 2027, hmm. what you want to have achieved. You want to move Nigeria from 12th position in Africa to say eighth. Hmm. Then you would have done something. You want to move Nigeria from 124th out of 195 countries in the world to say. 90th position, you would have done something and posterity will judge you rightly. But if these statistics remain after their tenure, then they have not done anything for Nigeria. Oh, well, we can only keep hoping and praying that um, Nigeria gets better in all areas. Honestly, in all areas. <laughs> all right, so thank you so much for coming on the program this afternoon. Thank you so much for, you know, lending us your wealth of knowledge, you know, in terms of our education system. 
in Nigeria. Thank you, Florence. Thank it's you always my pleasure. Here. Thank you for having me, Rose. All Thank right. you, WFM. So, well, there you have it. At the end of the day, a lot of monitoring has to go into what goes into our Nigerian schools because this is one of the factors that shapes an individual's mind and reasoning. So, we all have to do, uh, you know, such cases. All right, so yes, a very special a big thank you to my guest today, Florence Olado Tomo, an education consultant. So you'll be hearing her much later in Lao Jobiri, of course. <laughs> and to you also for being part of the big question. All right, a uh, very big thank you to the executive producer of the program, Tom Wakewale Shunaya. The Big Question is a program where we discuss and profess solutions to issues affecting us as a nation and as citizens. Remember that conversations like this don't end here. We must continue to raise awareness on issues. Continue to speak about the problem and most importantly, profess solutions to it. So remember to be a patriotic Nigerian. My name is Rose Yusuf Kai, so do stay tuned to Women Radio WFM 91.7. Good afternoon. WFM 91.7.
WFM 91.7